वेलकम टू एपिसोड नाइन ऑफ जाने अनजाने सीजन टू विद मी राजीव माथुर टुडे वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट हु इज नॉट इन द मेडिकल प्रोफेशन बट ओवरऑल इज अ हेल्थ केयर कोच शी इज बीन टॉकिंग टू द सीनियर लीडरशिप शी इज बीन टॉकिंग टू द कॉर्पोरेट्स अबाउट वेलनेस एंड मेंटल हेल्थ प्लीज अलाउ मी टू वेलकम हरमीत आनंद आपका जाने अनजाने में बहुत बहुत स्वागत और हम अभिनंदन करते हैं Thank you so much, Rajiv, for having me uh, on this special show of yours, and I am very happy to be part of this journey of yours. So, the first and the most important questions for our viewers to understand: What do you do professionally? So, as you rightly said, I am a coach, and I work with executives uh, in the space of uh, well-being. Well-being doesn't necessarily only mean that you know I'm working in the space of their health. but well being happens even in the areas of you know how they express themselves what their communication style is you know how much they're connected with meaning and purpose uh and i have been doing coaching for the last uh, 10 11 years now and uh, i work with the within you know within organizations helping senior executives uh to become better uh, at who they are using their authentic values to create value for the businesses that they are taking care of this is this looks like a profession which is related to healthcare mental health and wellness you are talking about so aapko aisa kab laga you've been into the corporate before that aapko aisa kab laga that you should choose this profession and why actually raji when i was uh, beginning to you know my coaching journey mujhe nahi laga ki this is actually going to be related to well being and mental well being uh, it was much later i realized that this is a job of any good coach to do which is change people's mindsets and how they think about things uh so most of the time that is what was happening even in my conversations jo my executives and leaders se kare thi it was around their businesses or their beliefs and how they can you know empower their teams how they can feel better about the decisions they make but eventually what was happening was uh you know they were changing internally in terms of how they view the world so their world view was changing and that is the base of any uh you know mental well being uh you know care workers are bolo this that's what we do right we work on people's mental frameworks uh then of course as covid happened uh most of the conversations that i was having with executives were uh, not just related to their work but a lot of it was also related to uh, aspects of health and well being you know the stress that they have so that's another thing right when you talk to executives one of the key things that one one is talking about is also the stress levels so that was another area which i realized that already was part of mental uh, you know well being that i was anyways journeying with them and partnering with people along the way So your question is, how did I get into it? Is that what you asked? Sorry, I got lost. Okay. <laughs> so I um, yeah, I started coaching in 2011 and 12 when I was in Singapore. Uh, I saw some people who were really impacted and what benefits they had. They were people very close to me, and um, I was basically intrigued by it. And there was there's never been any looking back. I'm I'm from the corporate world myself, so I know the anxiety. and the pressures of uh, working in the corporate world uh, and i just love my job now which is to partner with people like me you know and I, i'm not going back from where I, what i am doing it's very very satisfying lekin bada interesting sawal jo main aapse puchne wala hu ke from corporate to the coaching ye sab aapne career choose kiya lekin bachpan mein aapne kya socha tha matlab what actually you want to become that is very strange because uh, bachpan mein we never know what we want to become um and uh, i still remember when i was very young i had told my parents that i want to be a pilot uh unfortunately tab bhi mere paas ye space thi and uh, at that time my parents said ki you know if you have a number in your eyes you can't become a pilot i don't know whether that's really true uh but anyways fir my hopes and dreams changed i also i loved singing so i wanted to actually think i used to think i can become a rock star also why not so i started writing lyrics my lyrics bhi likhti thi poems bhi likhti thi they got published in my school magazine um then there came a phase when uh, you know i i started like, liking drama instead of singing so i was part of dramatics and i continued working you know in the field of working matlab as a hobby only uh, in the field of dramatics so i would say sab kuch everything 
think I could do anything, and I still think anyone can do anything. Um, and um, now my latest dream is that maybe along with the work that I'm doing with coaching, and especially because health and well-being has a lot to do with nutrition, uh, maybe I will uh, someday open a cafe uh, which is all about health. Uh, so. Yeah, dreams keep evolving for me. And who knew? Tab to we had not even heard of the word coach. It's a very new field. So I'd never imagined that I would be coaching people. अपनी family के बारे में, अपने परिवार के बारे में और बताइए तो हमारे program का जैसे tagline है कि मेरी कहानी मेरी ज़ुबानी. तो आपकी ज़ुबानी में आपकी कहानी बचपन से आज तक क्या है? ये हम जानना चाहते हैं. So my parents actually are, uh, you know, they were. born and brought up in uh, pakistan before the division happened and uh, they immigrated to india my parents my dad's family moved to bombay which is uh, interesting because now i live in bombay but my parents from india my mom moved to amritsar and uh, so they you know they had to start their life from the very scratch and um, this I come from a family which established their roots as a you know uh, as a family which was into f- giving food to people they started from the roots were small uh, but then now a lot of them my cousins my dad's cousins all of them have restaurants and my dad also had a couple of restaurants uh, while growing up even though he's a lawyer by profession he moved in in that direction so my family comes from that we are a very Foodie family. Uh, my family is also pretty big. We are uh, four siblings, and m- my brother, who is younger to me, he is actually a head chef uh, with uh, with uh, Radisson in UK. So uh, he is the one who is the torchbearer of our family. He is the one who is <laughs> continuing to be in that uh, space. So my parents have always uh, encouraged all of us to take the profession that we wanted to. Uh, you know have as uh, as kids there was never a pressure that girls have to be in a certain way and boys have to be in a certain way as you can see my i have only one brother and he's the one who's on the line of uh, cooking and he's a good chef very very a good chef and we three are doing our own thing so um I'm, and i have a global family my sisters are not in india my brother is not in india um one of my sisters come back um but it's it's always good to grow up in a huge family and i think there was always a protective uh, you know element when you have a large family uh, but nowadays the situation is very different it's like people are have small families we could don't even have enough aunts and uncles to you know to talk to or grandparents staying with you so i think that society as story story also shifted uh, so i do come from you know family which feels like a tribe like a village around and i'm uh, in fact uh, looking forward to seeing all of them in august this this year it's been a long time since i saw them so we're getting together as a family and meeting uh, in london uh, coming back to uh, uh, profession and the you know recent past two two and a half years corona has affected everyone businesses families individuals students adults everyone corporates mein uh, online uh, uh, discussions online uh, decision making when they say i have also heard that there have been conflicts and fights between people who pehle kabhi chai ke upar koi saw hota tha to abhi nahi hota abhi uske beech mein when you are talking online there are difference of opinions there is uh, you know you you're getting rude and discussing so i'm sure uh, aap itne sare corporates ko coach karti hain senior leadership ko coach karti hain uh, So we want to know, uh, Armit Ki, what has been your heart-touching experience during the COVID, within the family, in the corporates, or out of your profession, which you want to share with all of us today here? Yeah, I think you know we all know COVID was really hard for a lot of people, and uh, with the lockdown, of course, there was so much of conversations, and you know, media was covering so much about the migrant workers. Uh, of course. there was a lot of suffering there at the same time there are people who are migrants you know who are not staying and living with their families uh like us like my parents are in delhi and i am in mumbai and for a lot of us people also it's uh, it's very vital that we stay connected with our elder parents so when covid happened one of the things that i observed with a lot of my clients who come from metros 
is the angst around what's happening to their parents because they couldn't go and visit them because the lockdown uh, so there was a that itself was a very very distressing thing i think for a lot of people young people especially in the corporate world who had you know just maybe graduated from uh, their mbas and you know maybe 5 6 years into working and so it was really hard for a lot of them i think uh, that was that was really you know some of the experiences i had where we completely stopped having conversations with them like as a coach if there was a leadership conversation being had our my concentration at that time was to make sure that unke you know the moods change because one of the things that i uh, you know has i know that unless we are in the right mood and emotional state no learning can happen so it was very imperative that most of the work that i was doing at that time was around helping people get into a more positive resourceful acceptance to whatever was happening and their moods and emotions were you know they were getting to a level where they could then learn something for which they were uh, you know being coached so that was uh, one of the things that was quite uh, different i would say you know during those times and at the same time i think it was also positive because people were being very open and vulnerable about it you know otherwise who in the corporate world talks about their emotions and anxiety you know we feel that we will be judged for it so it became very okay or it was like acceptable to talk about things that we've never spoken about so it became easier for you know me as a coach to work with people uh, because there were not there were not many masks you know they were being very authentic with whatever was happening all of us were having the same experience and i think around the same time what was hard as somebody who was supporting these people is to make sure that while i was working from home uh, you know i had people to take care of and everybody was working from home right so to have my own boundaries to take care of my own self when i'm supporting people to be uh, in the right frame of mind to help them in their journey was uh, another very very strong learning experience for me and i think i came better out of it like i i learned a lot about my own resilience uh because if any human being has a sense of meaning and purpose to their lives and to me coaching gives me that meaning and purpose if we all have a sense of meaning and purpose in life we just become better at taking care of what needs to be taken care of because we are so driven by our meaning and purpose and i think that really helped uh and i i think the conversations i had with a lot of my clients at that time was also around what gives them meaning you know what is really giving them meaning and so that's in a nutshell i'd say it was a it was a change for all of us in terms of how we view the world uh no though the world might be coming back to some kind of normal see rajiv i still think i just still hope that people haven't forgotten um uh, you know all the lessons we've learned during the major uh, your pandemic waves that's very interesting and insightful i mean uh, jo aapne bataya and the positive part of the covid jahan logo ne samjha relationships ke bare mein jahan logo ne ehsaas kiya ki wo parivar ke sath hona chahiye and they were really worried uh, i mean uh, uh, what do you think and what is your advice this this is going to stay the mental situation is going to stay for a long long time so what do you think is in store for next one year and what is your advice especially to the to the younger generation yeah i think yeah, very good question uh, rajiv because younger generation is the one who needs a lot of uh, social connection and they were really impacted right they were really really impacted and i think um, there is no there is no like one advice i think first of all first thing is yes the conversations around wellness are becoming more open and people are having it organizations are having it um people are hiring chief wellness officers within their organization it's become a way to retain people if organizations really care about your health and well-being uh then you as a as an individual as an employee you want to work with them and you know it could be areas of not just physical health but also aspects of inclusion uh you know are you being included is there more trust um, 
and all you know all the other software aspects. So I think a lot of organizations, most of them, are at least becoming very very aware that this is necessary. Um, for younger uh, lot, I would say that you know change has always been there. You know, it is not like we have never had changes. Just like how we speak too much, we are seeing in social media. We read a lot, so we talk about, oh my God, change is happening. Of course, change, discomfort, uncertainty is always there. Uh, the younger lot has been very, very protected. Uh, you know, in ways of how they have grown up, some of them. And I think the faster they become acquainted with the fact that you have to change on a dime. Uh, would be necessary now. How to do that is first become aware of what, how you think. You know what are your thinking patterns? Where do you normally live your life in your head? Is it always thinking about your past? Are you always ruminating about what hasn't happened to you, or are you always worried about your future? So I think my advice is, is to for people to take time and reflect. To how, what is the quality of your thoughts? And then number two is not to remain in that story, because no matter how hard that story is, if we just live the story again and again, we are only going to make it happen. Even in the future, we're projecting our past into the future. So not to live it, just let go. I, I think that is one of the phrases I would say that uh, you know is part of my. Uh, One of my themes, I would say, just learn to let go and just, uh, embrace the now, the present. You know, you always get to learn more when you are talking to a coach. So I stand gained and more learned after talking to you today. Uh, my last question uh, to you is that: uh, Who is that one person you think you are very close to and who knows you the best, and why? So a lot of people, I would say, know me a lot. Very well. I'm not a very secretive person, but one person who knows me really well would be my daughter. I think I have had more opportunities to uh, connect with her. She's my, you know, she's our only uh, child, and uh, we have a lot of similarities between her and me. Uh, so we are mostly like friends, and she knows a lot uh, about me. It's some of the secrets. In fact, she's my coach. I would say sometimes I learn a lot from her. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very really well said. That's really well said. Amit, thank you once again for uh, coming on the show. As I said, I stand gained talking to you all the time, and even today. Coach, se baatein karenge to gyan milega. So I'm I'm a lot of takeaways uh, today for me, and I'm sure all the viewers of the show will also stand gained. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Indeed, a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. 